Hey guys, just imagine an egg handler who has to supply eggs from one city to another. He had received an order of 5,000 chicken eggs. On his way, he found that the road was much bumpy. On reaching his destination, what he found was, oh, many of his eggs cracked down and he had only 4,000 eggs left. Same is the case with the drug. The amount of drug you take by your mouth and the one that reaches the circulation are not the same. Even the amount of drug absorbed from the GIT and the one reaching the circulation is different. Well, this is just because the drug may undergo biotransformation reaction and get metabolized before entering into the systemic circulation. This process is called first pass metabolism also known as worst pass effect or pre-systemic metabolism. Now, what's the major site of drug metabolism? Liver, of course. One of the major functions of the liver is detoxification. Toxic substances absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract are first directed towards the liver before they enter into the systemic circulation, where they undergo biotransformation and are conjugated by the liver to form water-soluble compounds, which are more easily excreted by the kidneys and the bile duct. Unfortunately, liver deals with our drugs taken orally in the same way. And in some cases, only a small amount of drug will make it to the first pass through the liver. Well, the first pass effect may also occur in the lungs, vasculature, gastrointestinal tract, and other metabolically active tissues in the body. This effect can become augmented by the various factors such as plasma protein concentrations, enzymatic activity, and gastrointestinal motility. Now you must be wondering that what should be done to the drugs with higher first pass metabolism because we want an appropriate amount of drug to reach the target site, right? Well, let's get back to the example of X plier. What will he do if he already knows that the road is bumpy and many eggs might crack on the way? He has two options. Either he can change the route or he can take some extra eggs with him, say 6,000 eggs in total maybe, so that he can deliver exactly 5,000 eggs. We have the same options for the drugs. We can either change the route of administration and switch to the one that bypasses first pass metabolism or we can increase the oral dose. We can switch from oral route to either sublingual, transdermal or parenteral route because through parenteral route we are administrating the drug directly into the circulation and as for the sublingual absorption, veins originating there do not join the portal system. And same goes for the transdermal absorption. As in the case of nitroglycerin, if you remember from our videos on nitroglycerin, it is usually administered sublingually or transdermally. And that's due to the fact that it undergoes a very high first pass metabolism, and about 90% of the nitroglycerin is cleared through it. Second option for the drugs with the high first pass metabolism is to increase the oral dose. The extent to which a patient may experience the first pass effect varies from patient to patient. And this must also be taken into the consideration when determining appropriate dosing by measuring patient's serum concentration to ensure that the patient remains within the therapeutic window of the drug. Doing so will maximize the efficacy of treatment and patient safety as well. Now, can you name a few drugs that undergo high first pass metabolism? Worry not, you don't have to learn them by rote, because I have an easy mnemonic for you that would help you learn it by heart. Nitrates have large pre-systemic metabolism. Wait, what? Just nitrates? Why am I repeating them again and again? Well, that's your mnemonic. Where N stands for nitrates, of course, H for hydrocortisone, L for lignocaine, P refers to propranolol, S for salbutamol, 
and M indicates morphine. So that was about first pass metabolism. Hope you have enjoyed the video. For more such videos, stay tuned to scaria.com.